morning. Ooh, good morning, church family, and welcome to another worship here at Living Water. It is nice to see all your faces out here today. Listen, guys, this is a special Sabbath. Hi, Gabby, I see you waving from the front. <laughs> guys, this is a special Sabbath. This is not an ordinary Sabbath. It is Easter weekend, y'all. We are here to remember and celebrate. I see you guys over there. We are here to remember and celebrate the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What do you say? Because you know because of the power of his resurrection, we have hope today. Amen? Because I know there are people here who have been going through challenges. It might have been yesterday. It might have been this week. It might have been last month. It might have been for years, y'all. But just like Jesus, just like Jesus, when you have your hope and trust in the Father, there is a new life awaiting you. That old problem, that old challenge, that old trouble, it will remain in that grave, tied up to a tomb, but you have a new life waiting for you. What do you say, church family? So if you are looking forward to that new life, if you want to live today in the power of his resurrection, you have come to the right place. Because we are here to celebrate that new life with our newer lives here at Living Water. Because for those of you who may not know, today's special Easter celebration is not going to be led by Pastor Neil. It is going to be led by all our youth here at Living Water. What do you say, church family? Amen, amen. So I'm going to invite all the youth to come up here. We call them our explorers. So explorers, come on up here. And church family, I'm going to invite you to join us as we open up with the word of prayer and then stand and sing with our youth for our praise and worship. Amen? Amen. Let's pray, church. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for just the opportunity to be here with your people in your place on this special holy day. Now, Father... Help us to leave all our troubles, all our problems in the tomb. And today, let us walk anew afresh in the power of the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. Bless our service and all our children who lead us today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So come on up here, explorers. Church family, stand with me now. The lyrics will be on the screen. Sing with us loud and give your praises to God. Come on up here, guys. The first song is Waymaker. Waymaker. In the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 
his goodness of God.
Good morning, boys and girls. Today's story is about the Jesus washing the disciples' feet. Jesus washing the disciples' feet. Um, this is um, Jesus had been teaching the people, but he knew it was almost. Jesus had been teaching the people. But he knew it was almost time to leave the earth. He gathered his closest followers to share a meal together, like we do today. Um, like we do today, the food was gathered and the dishes were laid out. It was time to eat. But there was a problem. The dishes were clean and the cups were the problem that there was still that there was still something that was not clean. In those times, there was something else that should be clean before anyone else began to eat. Can you guess what else needed to be cleaned? What do you think it was? Yes. He said, if you guess feet, What did they say? His feet. If you guessed feet, then you were correct. In those days, washing your feet before a meal was very important. Washing the feet before a meal was very important. People were sandals and walked in the very dirty streets at that time. Sometimes animals do the street as a toilet, and sometimes people threw the rubbish out into the street. Jesus and the disciples would have been very close to each other. So this was a problem. This we need our feet washed. Where is the servant? But something happened they never expected. Jesus took off and took off his outside clothes. He got a towel and a bowl of water and then bent down in front of each disciple to wash their feet. Everyone was in shock. Jesus was his teacher. He was not, in, he was too important to do this job. This was a job for the servants, not for the teachers. For the, for the when Jesus came to Peter, Peter, Peter was shocked. Stop, I will never allow you to wash my feet. But Jesus told Peter it was all right. Jesus wanted Peter to know that good teachers and good leaders love their friends and take care of them. They don't have to act better than everyone else. Jesus was a teacher, but he was but he was willing to be like a servant and show love to, uh, love to others. Jesus told Peter that he wanted to show love to his people this way. Peter, if you don't let, not let me wash your p feet, if you don't, Peter, if you don't let me wash your feet, then you are not one of my people. Of course, Peter wanted to be one of Jesus' people. He wanted so much that he said, if you want to, then you can wash my feet, my hands, even my head. Jesus taught the disciples many other things after this. He knew he would die on, he knew he would die on the cross, so he told them that he would have to go away. Jesus wanted his disciples to always to remember that they should love one another. They should not act proud and try to be bossy. They should be like servants and help one another. If Jesus could do this, then so can they. We can read Jesus through a word in our Bibles. Jesus said, I give you a command, love each, love each other. You must love each other as I have loved you. All the people will know that you are my followers if you love each other. Jesus showed all love to all his disciples and helped them. How can you show love to other people today? How, would, would anyone like to 
say a reason why, how you can show love to somebody today? To help him, to help them if they're struggling with other things. Um. If you're at a playground and someone is like alone, you could play with them. Amen. Would anybody like to read this verse? Um, Noni. I give you a new command. Love each other. You must love each other as I have loved you. All people will know that you are my followers. Followers, If you love each other. John 3, 34 through 35. Thank you. I think I'm sure. Would, any, would anybody like to play? Oh, yes. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Please let us have a wonderful day. And please let, um, if anybody heard that the bridge um, that fell from a ship, Please let the other people get found in the water, and please let and please let people if they're struggling, please let them, please let them, um, have, please let them, please let them uh, have a feel better and 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 can be calm so they can so so they don't make mistakes and they can make it perfect and please don't let anyone get hurt today in jesus name amen 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 just like jesus gave bread Give some bread to you guys. Okay. And just a reminder, don't eat it in the sanctuary. You should probably eat it at home or somewhere else. Thank you. Um, we have a little piece of bread for everybody, but not to eat in the sanctuary is to eat when you go home. Thank you, Eden. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. John 13, uh, 34, 35. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everybody will know that you are my 
disciples if you love one another. Um, happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Um, before I pray, I would like to share a testimony, something that happened a couple of weeks ago. Um, so I had an upcoming test, and I had to study for it, right? I was very nervous. Um, but yeah, I studied and like I reviewed my notes because I wanted to get a good grade on this test. Um, I really care about my grades. Um, and so... On the day of the test, I was really nervous, but um, I, was, I prayed to God. The night before, I prayed to God to help me um, and to, like, to pass the test. And before I took the test, I also prayed. I was like talking to God in my mind like while I was taking the test. And um, I, when I finished, I wasn't, that, I wasn't really satisfied because I didn't think that I was going to get a good grade. I actually thought I was going to fail, but... I didn't feel that prepared, but um, but the next class I received my test and I saw that I got a good grade. I got a 27 out of 27, and um, um, I knew that um, I knew that that was that was God helping me. God, God helped me to get a good grade on the test because I had faith and I had prayed like so many times. I was praying that God would help me to pass this test, to get a good grade on it. And so, yeah, that was, that, that's my testimony. Yeah. Um, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. Um, thank you for waking us up and bringing us all here to your house. Um, we praise you for, for always being with us, for loving us, for sacrificing us. I mean, for sacrificing yourself for us. Um, and thank you for, for making miracles and for, um, for answering our prayers according to your will. Um, we thank you for, for everything that you give us, for giving us strength and courage and um, for giving us gifts. Um, we ask that you be with us wherever we go and whatever we do. You give us more strength, courage. Um, we ask that you give us faith to help us be faithful, to stay faithful, and to have faith, um, to know that you're always with us and that we shouldn't worry. We shouldn't be afraid of anything. There's nothing to be afraid of because um, our Lord is always with us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning. Today I have today I have the honor to be speaking about two fruits of the spirit, gentleness and kindness. Before I start, please join me in reading Galatians 5:22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now I know I still have a lot to learn. I mean, I'm just nine years old, soon to be ten. But so far, I have learned about how much God loves us and how we should treat, how we should treat others. And part of that is to be kind and gentle with one another, just like God is with us. These two fruits of the Spirit go very well with each other. You really cannot have one with, without the other. In Colossians 3.12, it says, 
Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves in tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. How many of you have a younger brother or sister? How many of you get mad at your younger brother or sister? I have a younger brother myself, and I know when I get mad, I might say some mean things to him. I just remember that saying mean things will not help the situation. Now, how many of you have grandparents? Grandparents are amazing people in our lives that not only give us almost anything we want, but can also give us great advice. I have a grandmother who is also a counselor, so she has a lot to advice to give. My grandmother taught me that when I get angry, there are different things, to, things that you can do to calm you down. Now, as teachers always say, you must double check your work. So I did my research to make sure these techniques really work. And guess where I went to check her work? YouTube. And she was right. Here are some of the techniques we can do to calm us down when we are angry. One, just breathe. Two, close your eyes and ten, count to 10 slowly. Three, chew a piece of gum. Four, talk to, a friend, talk to a friend or family. Five, listen to calming music. Six, exercise. And seven, most importantly, to have God in our hearts. Just like in the verse that I read before in Colossians, we must clothe ourselves in kindness and gentleness, and none of that can be possible without God. Once we can stay calm during tough situations, we can be kind and gentle with one another no matter what. I haven't been the best with my brother, but as we grow up, I hope we can try and be kind and gentle with one another and be able to continue treating others the same way. Jesus taught us kindness. There are several stories in the Bible of Jesus being kind and gentle with others, such as dining with a sinner, preaching to the Gentiles, showing compassion to the sick, the woman who poured perfume, healing the blind, and healing the leper. One of my favorites is when Jesus healed the leper. When the man with leprosy came and knelt before Jesus, asking Jesus to make him clean, Jesus did not hesitate. He reached out his hand and touched the man and healed him. You see, back then, leprosy was considered unclean, untouchable, kind of like us now. If you see anyone cough or sneeze, everyone's thir first thought is COVID, and they might run the other way. Not Jesus. He showed kindness by healing the man. He didn't see the man as a leper, but a sick human who needed help. In Ephesians 4.2, it says, Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowances for each other's faults because of your love. It's important for us to remember that we should act as God did. At times, we feel alone in our lives, but God is always there to remind us that having him on our side keeps us calm. That is why today I remind all of you to walk like Jesus did. Be gentle and kind to everyone that you love and everyone that may come in your lives because you never know whose life you might change by being gentle and kind. I leave you today with this message. Don't forget to be kind. Don't forget to be gentle and kind all the time. Thank you. Hi everyone, my message today is entitled The Undeserved Gift. Before we start, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for letting us kids do an amazing work for you. Please help it to be your words that come out of my mouth, not mine, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. God's mercy is an amazing thing because because if someone had done wrong to me, I would not show mercy or even try to. I'd get really, really mad and try to do something bad back to them. 
But when we do wrong to God and then say sorry, God is very hap happy for us to be back in his family. We, in we see an example of Jesus doing that in one of my favorite Bible stories, Joseph. We will be looking at how Joseph showing mercy to his brothers is like Jesus showing mercy to us. For people who may not know who Joseph was or much about him, he was the most loved son of a great God-loving chieftain named Jacob, the father of the Israelites. Because he was Jacob's favorite son, Jacob treated him better than all the other sons. He even made him a beautiful, colorful robe, usually referred to as the coat of many colors. His older half-brothers were angry at him and wanted to kill him. They threw him in a pit, but then saw some Ishmaelites traveling to Egypt and sold him to them. When he was brought to Egypt, he was sold to Potiphar, an official. He became Potiphar's head servant, but then got thrown in jail. He was falsely accused, though, so he had done nothing wrong. Then Pharaoh's butler and baker were thrown into jail, and they had interesting dreams that they thought might have some meaning. Joseph correctly interpreted the dreams, but though he asked, the butler forgot about asking him to get out of jail, and he didn't ask the baker because the baker was going to die. Two years later, Pharaoh had a dream, and no one could interpret it. Then the butler thought of Joseph, and Pharaoh asked to bring him from the prison. He interpreted Pharaoh's dream to seven years of lots of food and then seven years of no food. Pharaoh then made Joseph ruler of Egypt, second to only him. He put him in charge of storage for food. Nowhere was there food during the seven years of famine, including Canaan, where Joseph's family lived. So they came to him for food, but they didn't know it. They came once, and Joseph kept one of them in prison as a test, but he gave them the money that they brought their grain with back. He said to bring their youngest brother the next time they came back or they wouldn't get any grain. They brought him, but they still didn't know that it was Joseph who was giving them grain. They got grain, but Joseph secretly snuck his silver cup into the youngest son Benjamin's grain. They were found out, of course, so they had to go back to see Joseph. And that takes us to Genesis chapter 45. In, um, Joseph con couldn't control himself anymore in front of all of his attendants. He cried out, have everyone leave me except these men. So there wasn't anyone with Joseph when he told his brothers who exactly he was. He wept so loudly that all the Egyptians and all the other rooms heard him. Everyone in Pharaoh's house heard him. If I was Joseph, I'd be, I'd be very angry at my brothers, but he still loved them and was very glad to see them. We are like Joseph's brothers to Jesus because we are mean to Jesus and sin against Jesus. Verse 3 Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers weren't able to answer him. They were too afraid of him. Joseph told his brothers who he was, but they were too afraid of him to answer back. We are sometimes too afraid to turn back to God. In verse 4, Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. So they did. Then he said, I'm your brother Joseph. I'm the one you sold into Egypt. But don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves because you sold me here. God sent me ahead of you to save many lives. That can also be the case with Jesus. God sent both Joseph and Jesus to save many lives. Um, uh, for two years now, there hasn't been enough food in the land. And for the next five years, people won't be plowing or gathering crops. But God sent me ahead of you to keep some of you alive on earth. He sent me here to save your lives by an act of mighty power. So then it wasn't you who sent me here, it was God. He made me like a father to Pharaoh. He made me master of Pharaoh's entire house. God made me ruler of the whole land of Egypt. God made Joseph ruler, ruler and God made Jesus ultimate ruler. Joseph was what was thought of as a criminal to second in command of the most powerful in the entire known world at the time. Now, uh, verse nine, now hurry back to my father. Say to him, your son Joseph says, God has made me master over the whole land of Egypt. Come down to me, don't waste any time. You will live in the area of Goshen. You, your grandchildren, your flocks and herds, and everything you have will be near me. Joseph gives them the best land in Egypt. God gives us heaven. Verse 11, there I will provide everything you need. There are still five years to come when there won't be enough food. If you don't come down here, you and your family 
and everyone who belongs to you will lose everything. Joseph provided everything his brothers needed, and Jesus provides everything that we need. Most people usually wouldn't do that, but Jesus did. Although we sinned against him, and we have done lots of bad things and wrong to him. We need God's mercy, and he's given it to us. As we end, there's a story that I'd like to share of God's mercy to me. When I was four years old, I became extremely sick. I couldn't move or even drink water. I'd throw up everything. I went to see my doctor, a very good friend named Dr. Stacy Scott McKinney. They took lots of tests and retests while my parents waited for a long time. <coughs> Dr. Stacy came with a very serious look that made my parents very nervous. She said, I have some bad news. Caleb has tested positive for juvenile diabetes. His blood sugar is very dangerous and he could fall into diabetic coma any moment. I've already told Children's National Hospital that you'll be there any minute. There's no cure for juvenile diabetes, but the hospital can help you at least take care of Caleb. My favorite nurse, Miss Asia, was crying when she heard the news. I walked over to her though and gave her a hug saying, don't worry, God will take care of me. We rushed to the hospital and they took us over to the ER. All the while, my parents and others in my family were praying for me. They took more tests at the hospital and confirmed that I had juvenile diabetes, but my sugar levels had lowered. They said it wasn't me who ate sugar, it was that my body had stopped working. My sugar levels were still too high though. The hospital was waiting for a room to keep me in for a few days, but nothing was opening. We were in bed, still taking tests and praying with all our might. Every test, my sugar levels were getting lower and lower. Then late at night, the main doctor came into the room with all the results of my test. We were expecting a room to be ready, but there was much different news. She said, I've never seen anything like this, and I can't explain it, but the most recent tests show no signs of juvenile diabetes in your son, though all the others did. The good news is you can leave. Even if we wanted to, we cannot keep him because there's no trace of diabetes in him. Amen. But, but we knew what happened. God's mercy healed me. He cured me of the incurable. I didn't deserve that because I sin a lot and we all do. But God's mercy came and saved me. Maybe you guys need God's mercy for forgiveness or healing. There are many other ways too. But tell God you want him. We all need God's mercy and he gives it to us. Amen. Now let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your mercy. Your wonderful gift that we need yet we do not deserve and cannot have without you. You love us so much that you went on a mission, a mission to relieve us of our pain and suffering and give us mercy. We know you will be coming to, taking us to, coming to take us to our heavenly home because you want the best for us even though we are sinners. Please forgive the sins of everybody here and anoint us to send your love and your mercy to the people around us. Dear God, thank you for just being the perfect God for an imperfect world that needs you. We love you so much. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Okay, how many here just want to say one last amen to all of the kids today? It's a round of applause. We are very blessed to have these kids. We just kind of tell them, hey, this is what we're doing, and they don't even fight us on it. They're like, okay, we're on board. I even tell them things last minute, and they do it without any hesitation. So I just want to thank all the parents for raising amazing kids and for these kids that have just done a wonderful job today. So thank you, you guys. Um, if everybody can please join, and then we're going to have the Kids Praise team come and sing the last song.
feet He has done great things See what our Savior has done See how His love overcomes He has done great things He has done great things one more time. Amen. Amen. Take a bow, guys. Take a bow. For God has done great things through them. What do you say, church family? Amen. Amen. Listen, I hope you were inspired by today's messages and songs and scriptures and everything that these wonderful kids did. And maybe you want to have that power of Jesus in your life, too. Well, today is your opportunity to take that next step with Jesus. You can just come see me after service. If you're worshiping with us online, go to our website, livingwatersda.org, and click on the next step button. You can scan that QR code. However it is, just take that step. Be a part of a family of God just like these kids. Amen, church family? Amen, amen. Um, and just if you go to our next slide, um, there you go. Our tithes and offerings, if you want to 
donate so this church can grow our kingdom of kids for Jesus, you can donate through that QR code on our website or an offering box in the back. And next slide, uh, AV, what do we have? If you're a first time guest, please make sure you see our welcome station in the front. We've got gifts to help you in that discipleship journey. And I think we've got one more slide, guys. And Please join us next week for our potluck lunch where we get to celebrate the goodness of God through a feast of fellowship. So please bring your favorite dish and join us as we uh, fellowship in potluck after our service. And AV, I think that's it. Is that right? All right. Church family, one more time. Let's give it up for our kids as we close in prayer. Guys, that was awesome. Church family, would you like to be led in worship with these guys again soon? What do you say? A repeat encore performance? Are you guys down? Oh, we're going we're gonna to have to sell them on it, guys. Come on, let's pray and lift them up to Jesus. Father God, thank you for just using each and every one of these children, for growing them in their faith, in their connection with Christ, empowering them, anointing them, and then sending them to serve us today to inspire us, to remind us, Lord, that the power of your love and the hope of your resurrection lives within even the youngest of us. So, Lord, as parents and as elders and as leaders here, help us to continue to equip and empower our youth that they may serve you mightily. Guide their steps. May they excel in all things exceed all expectations, find the highest favor in the sight of everyone, but most importantly in your sight, that they may bring the joy of the Lord in every step of their journey with their wonderful Savior Jesus. May we all here do the same. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Have a wonderful Easter weekend. And when you see these kids in the hall, let them know what a wonderful job they did. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week.